Remember when adding multiple graphics cards to your PC was a big deal? Maybe not all of you do, but for those who have been around the PC gaming scene for a while, multi-GPU setups like SLI and Crossfire were pretty exciting stuff. Now, if we look back in history, the gaming landscape was, well, quite different to how it is today. So what happened to the idea of linking multiple GPUs together to get super high frame rates in games? Well, in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the rise and full of multi-GPU technologies in PC gaming. We'll talk about how it started, why it became popular, and what actually led to its downfall. Now, if you've been building PCs for a while, this might bring back some nostalgic memories. But if you're newer to the scene, you're gonna to get to see a part of the PC kind of gaming history that actually shaped where we are today. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. <sighs> I'm never gonna be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So let's go back in history to the late 90s. A company called 3DFX Interactive came up with something called Scanline Interleave, or SLI, which at the time let you use two Voodoo 2 graphics cards together to boost performance. This at the time was groundbreaking and showed what was possible when GPUs were put together. Then fast forward to 2004 and we saw Nvidia bringing back SLI after acquiring 3DFX, but not wanting to be left behind, AMD, known as ATI back in the day, introduced Crossfire in 2005. Suddenly, running two GPUs in your system was the new hot topic, with PC gamers and enthusiasts getting really excited. Forums were buzzing with discussions about the best card combinations, setup tips, and how much faster games could actually run. People took pride in showing off their rigs with those bridge connectors linking the GPUs. But it wasn't just about getting higher FPS, it was about being serious about PC gaming. Then, moving into the late 2000s and early 2010s, multi-GPU setups essentially hit their peak. In some games and benchmarks, adding a second card could give you a noticeable performance boost, and game developers started optimizing specifically for these setups, with both Nvidia and AMD highlighting the benefits in their marketing efforts. We saw some well, pretty wild hardware during this time. Cards like the Radeon HD6990 and the GeForce GTX 690 having essentially two GPUs on a single board. And well, if that wasn't enough, you could even run two of these cards together, effectively having four GPUs in one system. It was extravagant. It was power hungry and exactly what some enthusiasts wanted. And at a time when electricity costs were much lower than what we have today, it wasn't just gamers who were interested. Professionals working in 3D rendering or video editing saw the potential benefits too. And for a while, it seemed like multi-GPU setups were the future of high performance computing. Around this time, an innovative solution came along called Lucid Hydra. Hydra allowed gamers to use both AMD and Nvidia cards in the same system potentially combining the best of both worlds. It wasn't tied to either manufacturer either, which was a unique selling point, and it promised scalable performance, regardless of the card that you actually used. The idea of breaking free from the limitations of SLI and Crossfire had many enthusiasts intrigued. However, despite its potential, Hydra struggled to gain widespread support. Software compatibility issues, inconsistent performance boosts, and limited adoption by game developers meant well, it never really quite took off. And I actually remember testing it for myself, and you know what? It was actually pretty good stuff. The concept was ambitious, but it just ultimately fell short, as the complexities of combining two different architectures just proved too difficult to overcome. So how did these multi-GPU setups actually work? Well, the main techniques were alternate frame rendering, or AFR, and split frame rendering, or SFR. AFR was, well, pretty straightforward. With two GPUs, one would handle the odd number frames and the other would handle the even numbered frames. When it worked well, you could see a big increase in frame rates. But AFR had some issues. Since each GPU was working on different frames, it could introduce input lag. 
Even more, it could cause micro stuttering, small hiccups that made games feel less smooth, even if the FPS counter was stupidly sky high. SFR, on the other hand, actually split each frame between the two GPUs. This could actually reduce some of the lag issues and worked well in games where different parts of the screen had varying levels of detail. There were then other techniques like CFR. Developers could actually choose what worked best for their games, but AFR was essentially the most common because it usually gave the biggest performance boost. These different methods showed that multi-GPU setups were complex in nature, and it wasn't always just, I guess as you'd expect, plug and play and getting everything to run smoothly often, well, took quite a bit of effort and that probably actually led to its demise. So if multi-GPU setups could offer such great performance, I guess the big question is why aren't they common today? Well, the reality often didn't match the hype and over time, several issues became apparent. In the best cases, performance gains were actually quite impressive. Benchmarks sometimes showed frame rates increasing by 60%, 80%, or even close to doubling with a second card. And for those chasing you know, high performance, this was very, very exciting stuff. But in everyday gaming, it was often a different story. Those micro stutters that I mentioned earlier could make games feel less smooth, even when the frame rates were high. And this was especially noticeable when using AFR. Compatibility, that was another kind of key sticking point. Some games worked well with multiple GPUs, while others showed little to no improvement, and some even performed worse. It was frustrating to spend a lot of money on a setup that just didn't consistently deliver better performance, along with power consumption and heat also being major concerns. I mean, the 6990 on its own was power hungry and produced a lot of heat, so having multiple of them was always gonna be a massive issue. Running too high-end GPUs increased your power usage and it generated more heat. So you often needed a better power supply and a better cooling system, which just adds to the cost and of course the complexity. Then there were the land of diminishing returns. Adding a second GPU could give you a good boost, but adding a third or a fourth gave much smaller gains while still increasing heat and power draw. And these issues led many to question whether multi-GPU setups were actually worth it at all. But even bigger changes were happening that would further challenge SLI and Crossfire. In addition to these challenges, multi-GPU rendering techniques like AFR and SFR brought their own set of problems. Users often encountered visual artifacts and graphical glitches, things like flickering textures, shadows behaving strangely, or even entire objects disappearing for a brief moment. These issues were caused by how frames were actually divided and processed separately by each GPU. Sometimes the GPUs didn't stay perfectly in sync, leading to frames displaying out of order or certain graphical elements just not rendering correctly. And then on top of that, driver support was probably the biggest hurdle. Multi-GPU setups relied heavily on updated drivers to optimize performance and fix these rendering issues for each individual game. If the drivers weren't up to date or if a game didn't get proper driver support, players might experience these visual problems until a fix was released. All of this just added another layer of frustration for gamers who just wanted a smooth and visually consistent experience. Now, going back to the timeline and moving further on into the mid 2010s, new graphics APIs like DirectX 12 and Vulkan came onto the scene. These promised better performance and more efficient hardware use. And they also offered new ways to handle multiple GPUs, potentially giving SLI and Crossfire a new boost. But in practice, again, things didn't work out that way. While these APIs allowed for more direct control over multiple GPUs, they required game developers to put in extra effort to implement the support. Most developers already dealing with the complexities of modern games were hesitant to spend time on features that only benefited a small number of users. And even then, game engines were also becoming more complex with advanced graphics techniques that made it harder to split the workloads efficiently across multiple GPUs. All in all, the simple division of tasks that made AFR and SFR effective wasn't as easy to achieve anymore. At the same time, gamers were moving towards higher resolutions like 4K, and on top of that, higher refresh rates. Now, you might think that this would be great for multi-GPU setups, but it actually highlighted some of their weaknesses. The increased bandwidth requirements and the need for precise frame timing just made it difficult for multi-GPU systems to deliver smooth experiences at these demanding settings. 
And all of these factors made it challenging to support multi-GPU setups effectively in modern games. Developers with limited resources and a declining number of multi-GPU users instead focused their efforts elsewhere. As supporting games decreased, fewer people invested in multi-GPU setups, and this just further reduced developers' incentives to support them. And it all just started to slowly fizzle out. Now, economics also played a huge role in the decline of multi-GPU setups. High-end GPUs started to become very expensive for consumers, so buying two of these for SLI or Crossfire was a significant investment, and just harder to justify given the inconsistent benefits. Then there was the dreaded cryptocurrency mining boom, and demand from miners led to GPU shortages and, of course, higher prices, making it even more difficult for gamers to get multiple high-end cards for ones which supported it, like the RTX 2080 Ti. These factors shifted consumer preferences. Instead of going for multiple GPU setups, many people chose to invest in a single, more powerful GPU. It was often more cost-effective and, overall, less complicated. And Nvidia and AMD noticed this trend and began focusing more on powerful single GPU solutions themselves. It made sense to put their resources into making one GPU perform as well as possible, rather than dealing with the complexities of multi-GPU setups. As these changes took shape, official support for multi-GPU technology started to fade significantly, and the likes of Nvidia began phasing out SLI in a very noticeable way. With the RTX 20 series, they limited SLI support to just their top-tier cards and transitioned to using NVLink, a more advanced connection primarily designed for professional use rather than gaming. By the time the RTX 30 series came out, only the highest end models like the RTX 3090 supported multi-GPU configurations. But even then, Nvidia announced that they would no longer provide SLI driver profiles for new GPUs starting from that generation. What's more, Nvidia began to disable multi-GPU support in driver updates for many games that previously supported SLI. This meant that even if you had a multi-GPU setup with older cards, you might find that newer drivers turned off SLI functionality in games where it used to work. They effectively shifted the responsibility to game developers to implement multi-GPU support via modern APIs like DirectX 12 or Vulkan. And this move signaled that Nvidia was stepping back from actively supporting multi-GPU setups in gaming, focusing their efforts on other technologies instead. AMD took a similar path with Crossfire, they quietly moved away from the technology, choosing to focus on improving single GPU performance instead. When their RDNA architecture was released without Crossfire support, and the Crossfire branding was completely removed from the drivers and marketing materials, it was clear that they were also moving on as well. AMD stopped updating Crossfire profiles and left multi-GPU support to be handled through explicit APIs, much like Nvidia did. So with both GPU manufacturers pulling back their support, game developers had even less reason to invest time in supporting multi-GPU setups. And the reduced hardware support meant the number of gamers using these configurations was shrinking. For developers, the time and effort required to implement and maintain multi-GPU optimizations just wasn't worth it for such a small portion of the player base. And due to that, it made more sense to focus on features and optimizations that would benefit the majority of users. Instead, the industry shifted towards other ways to improve performance. Technologies like Nvidia's DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, and AMD's FSR, Fidelity FX Super Resolution. These use AI and advanced upscaling techniques to boost frame rates and improve image quality without the need for extra hardware, and they became attractive options for both developers and gamers over multi-GPU support. While multi-GPU setups have mostly disappeared from consumer gaming, they haven't vanished entirely though. They're still important in professional fields like scientific computing, AI research, and high-end content creation. In these areas, software is designed to take full advantage of multiple GPUs by being able to scale better to get more compute power. Some enthusiasts do still continue to experiment with multi-GPU configurations though, trying out unofficial solutions to enable multi-GPU functionality in modern games. And while this is, well, a niche activity, it often comes with limitations, and it shows, I guess, that there's still some interest in the potential of multi-GPU setups, even if it's not widespread. So, looking to the future, the ideas behind multi-GPU technology might find new applications. In areas like cloud computing and distributed processing, using multiple GPUs remains important, even if it's a different form than traditional SLI and Crossfire setups, specifically aimed at gaming. So what's the takeaway? 
The story of SLI and Crossfire shows how quickly things can change in the tech world, especially for PCs. These technologies went from being at the forefront of gaming to basically being mostly obsolete in a relatively short space of time. We've seen how initial excitement gave way to practical challenges, how changes in game development and hardware made multi-GPU setups less viable, and how economic factors influenced the development of GPUs as a whole. Whilst it's unlikely that multi-GPU gaming setups will make kind of a, a big comeback, the legacy of them continues to influence how we think about gaming performance and technology in general. So yeah, it will be interesting to see how technologies that are now at the forefront either continue to stay there or, I don't know, maybe follow the same trend and become something that we may never see again. And in all honesty, with SLI and Crossfire, it felt like it just died overnight. I remember I was there. <laughs> For now, that's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully you enjoyed this look back at the rise and the unfortunate fall of multi-GPU technologies in PC gaming. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a whole host of goodies, including behind the scenes content, access to our testing data, bi-weekly game nights, meetups at our offices, and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.